Hey everybody, I'm Joe DeGanzik and this is Smarter Home Life with some news from the Googleplex, or well, you know, Google, actually, from the uh, Shoreline Amphitheater. This was the uh, Google, the start of Google I.O., their annual big uh, developer conference out there in Mountain View, California. The developer conference, they don't always give us new hardware. They don't always give us new products, but they show us, kind of show off what they've been working on and how it's going to integrate in all, all the different Google apps and services and all that stuff. So anyways, I'm going to cover just the smart home stuff, things that surround the smart home, largely the Google Assistant improvements to it. So I'm going to do that and we're going to jump into some kind of predictions and analysis and all that good stuff and it's possible during this video that I could set off your devices so this video program may inadvertently activate your smart speaker or virtual assistant smarter home life apologizes for but will not be held liable for any potentially catastrophic events that may occur due to the viewing of this program thank you for your cooperation one of the first things that they mentioned was AI, artificial intelligence. They talked about this last year as if it was new, which it really has not been. Google has been working on uh, machine learning and deep mind learning and AI stuff for quite a while now. Anyways, they talked about this last year. They said it's, we're going to AI first. We were search and then we were mobile and now we're AI. So you've seen a lot of this kind of permeate the various Google services over the year, over the past couple of years really. And of course, an assistant really isn't an assistant if it can't have some kind of artificial intelligence or if it at least can't follow some instructions and figure out kind of what you want to do. As of today, although a little while ago I checked and still not available, six, six brand new voices available for the Google Assistant. That would be on your phone. You generally have to switch one setting and it kind of switches all of them. You can't change it per device. Um, so whatever account that you have for Google, as, as long as all those different things are logged into it, you change the one voice and it's going to change it everywhere. So six brand new ones in addition to the two that were already there. The original female voice apparently named Holly or codenamed Holly. She, whoever she was, spent a long time in a studio and uh, recording a lot of samples and so forth. So six brand new ones. They talked about WaveNet, this system they developed through um, Google's DeepMind from a couple years ago. It helps them synthesize new voices, have the actors spend less time in the studio, and have it you know, really work on speech and how we actually speak. And this is in many different languages, not just English, of course. This has to work and be customizable across the world. Even John Legend, uh, the uh, singer-songwriter, uh, John Legend's voice will be available in certain uh, certain responses, they call it contexts, uh, on the assistant later this year. But as of today, maybe sometime today or tomorrow, six brand new voices coming out. Uh, stats, 500 million devices support the Google Assistant, 40 car brands, 5,000 connected or smart home devices. That's really important. That's kind of what I'm talking about. By the end of the year, the Google Assistant will be in 30 languages and 80 countries. So Google is really pushing ahead and I think they're they're doing a good job of kind of getting out there and kind of coming up to parity with Alexa and the the Echo. So now the other thing is talking to this thing uh, on really on both platforms, but focusing on Google. Um, they both are at war, you know what I mean? They're both gonna improve. I think Google's experience with AI and speech and voice processing, they're ultimately gonna win the race. I think they already do win the race, but Amazon's got more devices out there. So making the assistant more comfortable, more natural to talk to, especially in the smart home, but even beyond that, when you're trying to rush out the door and you need to get your commute information and you know turn off the lights, maybe make make sure certain things are shut down, check on the kids and uh, you know just whatever you've got to do, you you it's natural to want to just say a whole bunch of things at once, and the assistants generally aren't good at doing that. The only thing that Google's been able to do recently um, is there's an and feature. So you can take one whole command and then take a whole other command and put an and uh, between them. And I, I would do a demo, but uh, the last time I tried it, it failed, so I'm just not going to say that. But you have to generally say, like, turn off the lights and then do this thing and put an and between them. They're adjusting that now so that you can do some, some more uh, functionality. The first feature is continued conversations. This is similar to what Amazon introduced a number of months ago, where you can pause, you can say to the assistant, okay, Google, and I want you to do this, 
And then if you pause for a little while, maybe a few seconds, five, 10 seconds, you can follow up with something. It's gonna continue listening to you as if you were supposed to make another statement. It'll kind of wait for you. And you don't have to say, okay, search engine again. And that's really helpful because that's how we talk. We, we say something and oh, we forgot this other thing. So, you know, turn on the lights and uh, you know set the movie time. And oh, I forgot, you know, turn on the popcorn maker, right? That was kind of the demo that they used, but that makes sense. And you can do that spacing it apart. The other thing that they introduced, which is also helpful in the smarter home, as I like to call it, is being able to group things together. So not just saying, turn off these lights and set the air conditioning to 75, but turn on the kitchen and living room lights. That takes, you know, they explained the entire part about breaking that sentence apart, taking the context, understanding that you want to turn on this light and that light, or this room of lights and this other room of lights, or again, set both thermostats to 75. That means that you can talk more naturally. That's really the goal of this. And I think combined with being able to pause, make multiple statements saying, okay, search engine, turn off the kitchen and the living room lights. You don't have to say, turn off the kitchen lights and turn off the living room lights. You can just group them together. Being able to speak more naturally to these assistants, specifically to the Google Assistant, I think is a total win. And we're going to see that feature most likely be enhanced in the coming weeks as they introduce it, that it's probably going to work for more than just the smart home. And they, they had some other demos with sports scores and, and other statistics. So they moved on to assistant displays. We heard about this, we saw them at CES. I actually didn't get to see them in person because I was kind of stuck at the booth uh, representing uh, Linky uh, Smart Technology. Anyways, on sale, we got a date on sale in July. These are basically the Google Assistant version of the Amazon Echo Show. And they're from JBL, from Lenovo, and from LG. Again, it's a smart speaker. It happens to have a display on it. It's a touch screen, usually. It'll give you context. You can watch movies, TV shows, get recipes. It'll give you cooking information, you know, all the things that you can think about. Uh, what a display and having actual visual information come back they go on sale in July. I think they're going to be priced between about 150 and 250. We've heard rumors that Google is actually working on their own, you know, branded product. We didn't see that come out today. No hints, no nothing. Assistant on phones. I thought this was also just relevant just a little bit where if you use the assistant on the Google Assistant app and you call up something saying, "Hey, you know, set the temperature to 75 or something." That's what they demoed. They will try to bring in the actual controls right into the assistant screen after you've called it up. You know, again, hey, set it to 75. Oh, maybe I meant to actually have it, you know, be a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. So that means instead of going to hunt for the app or make another voice command, you'll be able to literally just make that change right there in the assistant uh, app. That's pretty cool. Again, small improvements are going to help, and they are definitely working through this. So that's. Uh, I, they didn't actually give the date on when that's available. The other things, uh, like I talked about, the continued conversations and the multiple actions, the phrasing is going to roll out over the next few weeks. Google Duplex. I just want to touch on this. I have a problem with this. This is literal robocalls. So the example that they gave, and they did a demo, which if this is true, it's pretty amazing, but kind of creepy. If you're too busy, like say, you know, again, uh, say you're at home, you're too busy. Uh, number one, you have to really be all in on Google. You've got to have your account, your contacts synced. Google needs to know about you, your, your very, maybe your kids' names, ages, you know, all the different things that you could give Google so that it knows how to make these calls. So if you're too busy, say your kids are sick, you're trying to help them, you're at home, you're a stay-at-home mom, you're too busy, too stressed out to call the doctor, but they need to go to the doctor, you can tell Google soon at some point, they're working, this is beta, I need to make a doctor's appointment for the kids on Wednesday or tomorrow between these hours. Google will literally apparently be able to actually make a phone call and interact as if it was a real person and make that appointment. Number one, that's really cool. Number two, I don't know about that. Then you're not gonna know, is it a human? Is it Google? I don't know where we're going on this, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Smarterhomehelp.com. I'm here to help you with your smart home questions, lighting questions, LED stuff, 
all that. And I just, I made a new URL just, just easier to go to instead of writing an email and so forth. Smarterhomehelp.com, there's a form, you can fill it out, send in your questions. I answer them usually within a few days and the most, kind of the best and most interesting ones to a wider audience usually wind up on the Q&A videos that are resuming at the end of this month. And if you've got a complicated project, you know, complex questions, challenging things, you can even check a little box and set up a dedicated smart home consulting session with me. I've done a lot of these over the past couple of years with many of you. It's a great experience. We have a lot of fun. I get to know a little bit more about you and vice versa and also of course your project and share a lot more than I can uh, do via email. For the show, you know, the smart displays, I would love to buy one or two of them and review them on the show. Obviously that costs money, the show needs a budget and uh, it would be great to have your support. I have redone the whole program over at patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. It's an easy way to support the show, a couple bucks a month. It's all explained there, and uh, there's been a lot of great people who have supported the show over the years, and I've kind of reworked it as the show is coming back. And uh, check it out, patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. It's an easy way uh, to support the show. And there's other free ways that I list on there as well that you can support the show as well. So now, back to the show. Let's see, what do I want to see? What did we not really get? I could go into a lot of this in detail, probably on a different show a smart home hub from Google. Because the fact is the smart speakers do not include the radios like Z-Wave and Zigbee and all those technical terms to communicate with sensors, to actually have proactive home automation. Say, you know, there's a motion sensor and you need to be notified of it or all the lights need to flash red. There's no way to do that with the current hardware the current smart speakers that Google has. And if they really want to be all in and maybe add AI to the smart home, they're going to have to add some control. They're going to have to kind of have their own hardware to control all these things and not just a speaker that happens to connect to your smart lights and locks, you know, and other devices through the cloud. It needs to happen in your home. And that helps with privacy and security and the, the latency or, you know, the speed of which these uh, commands can be sent out. That's, I really feel like that uh, needs to happen. I could be completely wrong that Google's just gonna say, yeah, you know, smart things and wink and those other companies, they've got this thing down. We're just gonna work with them closely and make this a better experience. So I would like to see that, but only time will tell. And I probably need to go into a whole different episode on just this topic. Um, Google routines, I mentioned this on the Friday quick tips last Friday, those are gonna be every Friday, by the way, um, if you haven't checked it out. Um, Google routines is great. You can assign a few different commands and phrases to one set of things that would happen, like, you know, wake up or go to sleep or I'm leaving, um, so that you can easily remember what you called it so that you don't have to think, well, what did I call that routine? But the routines aren't as customizable because Google just gives us a few different version, you know, uh, one version of each different thing, six of them, but I'd like to make my own, like from scratch, instead of, I have to customize good morning to fit something else. I really would like my own thing. So Google, make that happen. I was really surprised we didn't see more of that today. Intercom and voice messaging. Uh, I really like, with some caveats, um, what they do on the Amazon uh, Echo ecosystem with the uh, calling feature and the drop-in and the intercom. You can use a broadcast feature um, with Google Home so you can actually use your phone or initiate a broadcast and just say something to all the other Google Homes on your Wi-Fi network or that are tied to your account. I think that's a cool feature, but it's not quite an intercom one-to-one -one or the calling feature. A Google, I just, you gotta work on that, okay? AI for the, for the smart home, the DIY thing that we've all kind of worked on over the past years, you know, people just, don't have the time and they're not always all in like I am and I'm kind of a, a nerd or a geek who's happy to sit down for a couple hours and think how could I make my smart home better I'm gonna write some code I'm gonna create some routines yeah people don't have time for that AI when done correctly and not in a creepy way can solve that because it can actually see what you're doing see what your routines are already you know, what you're already doing because if you're interacting with your voice assistant like Google Home like you're probably already doing now it's recording all that stuff anyway so if you trust Google to hang on to that and not be creepy well maybe a little bit by little bit they can actually enable something that could suggest hey 
We'll create a routine for you. We'll create a scene for you. We'll create an automation, a schedule for you automatically based on this stuff that we're seeing that you do. You turn the lights on and off at various times. You go to bed at this time. You get up at this time. You see what I mean. All that AI and deep learning and, and the machine learning, I think Google needs to step it up. I think this is the year to do it, and maybe we'll see something this fall. Uh, if not, maybe next year. Uh, do we trust Google to do it? That's another. That's a whole other question, data question. Do you trust any of these big cloud-based, you know, and, and companies that offer a lot of services for free? Would you pay? Would you pay a monthly fee, just like people have talked about? Would you pay to have a face? To would you pay for Facebook? Would you pay a monthly fee for some of the Google services that you get for free now? Another question, so that you're not being <laughs> sold to with ads and so forth. Predictions. Uh, smart displays. Yeah, we finally got a date this summer, but I think we're going to see a bunch more of these. Obviously, from other companies that are running uh, what Google's uh, what is running on the ones from LG and JBL and from Lenovo, which is basically Android things, kind of the underlying system. But there is a way actually for companies, and I know this transparency uh, because I work for a company, uh, I do some work for a company called Linky Smart Technology, who is, uh, they have a smart home hub device that, they're, that they've that they been working on. And uh, it uses the Google Assistant SDK. So it's their device, it's their kind of secret sauce operating system, and it includes the ability to talk to and get responses from uh, the Google Assistant and to make things happen. So I think you're going to see a bunch more of these products come out. Uh, evolution of the cloud-based um, smart homes and bridges. If if Google is not going to do anything as far as custom hardware, the cloud-based thing that they've got going on right now, yeah, it's got to have scheduling. It's got to have conditions uh, for something, you know, in terms of um, if something turns off make something happen. Obviously, we know it doesn't work with sensors, but gee, I can't even get the status of sensors that I have connected to my SmartThings hub that's connected to the Google Assistant or even to the Echo. Otherwise, that's it. You know, um, make make your home, <laughs> whether it's through the Friday quick tips, which are going to be every Friday now, or just checking out videos and just checking out different things and experimenting with your own smart home, connected home devices. Make your home just a little bit smarter every single day. It just takes a little bit of time. Otherwise, I'm Jody Ganzik. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.